are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Podcast fam, what is up? Colin here with my number one dog. What up, Mike? <laughs> Mike D's in the house. Michael D's in the house. Hey, we just wanted to tell you guys that we have a new texting service, right? If you want to get notified when these episodes go out, all you have to do is text WOA GNV, that's W H O A G N V, to 484848. Do that and you will get notified every time a new episode goes out. It'll text it right to your phone so you can be the first to listen in. I'm subscribing right now. You doing it right yeah, now? Yeah, I do it. I you wanted to see it? what it said. All right. 484848 is the number. Text W H O A G N V. We will see you later. Bye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. I cannot wait to get that printed on the back of a shirt. <laughs> the whole thing? Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's happening. Mike, what is up? Hey, hold on. My name is Colin Austin. I'm your host. <laughs> Just stick to the script. Yeah. Don't forget to introduce yourself, because everybody says you forget to introduce yourself. And my co-host is the grooviest of gator groupies, champion of trivia, sage of scooter sales, the magnificent mystifying Michael Dees. What is up, no, Mike? I actually am champion of trivia. I won last night. Did you? Yeah. Where'd you play? Uh, Lucy's downtown. Lucy's. Yeah. Just a team of two. I mean, of what's us. the competition like, though? Seriously. All twice my age. So okay. when they ask like pop culture questions from the 60s and 70s and stuff, it's like they were there. Yeah. I just know it because I you watch guys, Jeopardy. Yeah, you guys that are listening, like Mike has. So what? You, you've tried out for Jeopardy several times. Uh-huh. You've even been like offered to go and do like the preliminary trials. Or right. Something. I've made it to the in-person audition twice. One time I actually went, and one time I didn't. Uh, so I've actually been in the contestant pool for 18 months. Uh, but was not selected. <laughs> he's gonna be selected one day. We're gonna root Mike on on Jeopardy because he's really, really good. Yeah, but see now, you, really now you talk about being really good at Jeopardy, and people just think about the guy that just crushed it. <laughs> he did, and I'm <laughs> probably never gonna be that guy. Yeah, so I don't even watch. I need Jeopardy. people to forget about that before I get on. <laughs> I don't even watch Jeopardy, dude. I'm sorry. Dude, you won like two million dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, that's cool though. That's nuts. Yeah. You need, well, you need to get on there and win that kind of money, bro. Come on. I do. I do. I, I do need to win that much money. Uh, well, so what's going on, man? Any gains will happen in? We're in September now. We're in September now. Uh, it's funny. Everything is like this time of year shifts to two things: students coming back and football. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what the city's about this time of year. So that's the best, man. Yeah. It's the best. I love the energy so much in the fall. It just I don't know. It just goes. Ele- it elevates to a completely different level, and I don't know how to explain it to people except for that. That I, there's just way more energy. I talk about this all the time. Like I don't know. I'm kind of whenever the summer starts, I get really excited because nobody's here, and it's nice to be able to get from one side of the town to the other, and and be able to just like be a Gainesville resident without the student population. But then once it gets to like this time of year, the energy starts coming back, it gets you excited. Yeah. And so so I kind of miss it, but, yeah. but it's here. <laughs> cool, man. Hey, I had another idea. I was like, you know what would be fun? Because you've been, you've been like, I don't know how many people know this, but you've been with me a long time, <laughs> a long time. People would be shocked. People would be shocked. Outside I, of I, Shannon, I've been with you the longest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my wife, pants, we're course. talking about my wife, Shannon. Yeah. So. Mike started working with New Scooters for Less back in 2005. Four. Four. Yeah, August God, 2004. It a, so it was the, the, and that, that first year. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's my question for you What's the biggest lesson that you have learned over all of those years? The singular biggest the lesson. The biggest lesson. From just like a retail point or just in business or? Yeah, just in, yeah, retail, business. Okay, I'll give you a couple things working that come to mind. Working with me, give everybody insight to working I'll, 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 I'll give you the first <laughs> couple things that come to mind. One is in retail, people are really slow to adapt. That's an observation. Like if, if you're not willing to change, whether it's, uh, we talk about social media or we go to these conventions and people don't even have websites and stuff like that. Like people are really slow to adapt in retail and you have the circuit cities and the Toys R Us that are just gonna fail. Um, the other problem from a more academic standpoint would be the, the 10 second rule. Like people people generally walk into the dealership, walk into your place and know whether they're gonna do business with you within the first 10 seconds from a perception standpoint. Yeah, that's um, a hard thing to teach too. Yeah. I mean, it's to, su- to I make, mean, to make team members point. understand that. Exactly, like they always feel like, oh, I mean, I just cleaned this like the other day and it's like, yeah, but you're gonna clean it today, <laughs> you know? Um, and then the last one is is kind of the 
not fake it till you make it, but you know, say yes and then figure out how you're gonna make something happen. Don't be afraid to to overcommit. I mean, keep your promises, but you know what I mean. Like, buy buy off more than deal. you can chew and yeah. chew it. Like, yeah, yeah. figure out how to get it done. So those would be the probably the three biggest things. Yeah, those are those are good lessons, man. Yeah. It's I'm almost gonna, like I read it ahead, gonna, but I didn't. I'm gonna, qu- <laughs> I'm gonna quiz. I'm gonna quiz quiz you every week. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like extra work for him. So, well, cool, man. I want to introduce to you our guest of the day, and I am going to try my best to nail this. I have name. faith in you. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I've been practicing this name for a week now, and and it's it's somebody that I within the last year I've gotten gotten to know. And, and she's incredible, does some incredible work here. So Gainesville World, everybody, let me introduce to you our guest, Irina Kanisheva. Good job. That, she gave a <laughs> thumbs up, you got the thumbs up. <laughs> How close was I for real? You say it. Yeah, Irina Kanisheva. She, she says it way better. <laughs> it sounds so much better. Say Colin Austin. <laughs> yeah, right, like, come on guys. Like, I like was literally looking at the pronunciation and practicing and oh, gosh, just, you know. I'm, hey, I'm gonna get better at this, you guys, as we go on, but Irina is an MBA candidate of the University of Florida, and she's the founder and curator of several ground, several groundbreaking projects, among them the first urban art initiative in North Florida, 352 Walls, and her own urban art agency, Gainesville Urban Art. Welcome to our show. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So everybody knows, like, we, we, I try to keep this, like, so mixed up in terms of guests, right? Like, I know that we lead, lean super entrepreneurial, but I think when we can bring in the art side of things, bring in, bring in the art, like, Gainesville is known for its art. Like, it's, it's so cool to see these masterpieces all over town. And, um, you know, but when we can bring that and mix it with business and that kind of like those lessons and stuff, I think it's really, really cool. So I'm excited to get into this talk. And art is something that I'm ironically like into, like, you know, like I'm, uh, yes, I'm a businessman and business is like my first love. But I mean, if you really, I mean, think back to 2004 and the first dealership we had, like the very first dealership we had, had this huge wall and it, and we graffitied the entire wall. I mean, we graffitied the entire thing. I was, we and, didn't, and, but <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not me, but <laughs> hired but we, somebody. But to we do hired it. a Gainesville artist to come in and do it, and it was. I mean, it was awesome, and like, and a lot of that, you know, kind of goes into um, really what I talked about when we were trying to create that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because you're gonna think this is funny, but <laughs> a lot of people in the early, like in the early age, st- stages of our business would thought scooters were dorky. Like college students, <laughs> like college students were like, "Mom, Dad, no, like I'm not gonna be caught dead on that scooter." <laughs> and I'm like, "Will you just shut up and let your mom buy you a scooter? <laughs> Dang, what are you doing?" And um, and so we knew that we had to change that perception. So one of the ways we did that was really focusing on creating our culture within the within our company and and really making our retail establishment cool. We wanted it to be cool. We wanted it to be young and like vibrant, feel like a, co- a place college kids would hang out, right? Mm-hmm. So we we did the graffiti, and then when we moved the dealership, we graffitied another wall. When we moved to this dealership, we graffitied the wall. So it's almost just been a part of of us. And I even remember like that first graffiti. We even took the uh, the graffiti. We took a picture of it, right? Mm-hmm. And then we turned it into a piece of digital art, which we then. Printed on shirts. Printed on t-shirt, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it kind of became like a logo of ours in a way. But anyway, so like, I, I love I love graffiti style, and, and it's fun because we've been talking about possibly doing something here, or you know, I've been <laughs> the the media studio that will come at some point in the future. I would love I would love to incorporate it. And she sent me some beautiful pieces from from artists, you know, all over. But one of the most recent one we've been talking about is from Gainesville originally, right? He is not originally from Gainesville, but he spent some time painting on the 34th Street wall, oh, which okay, is okay. Uh, really a landmark for Gainesville. Yeah. And uh, if you know the history, uh, many famous graffiti writers actually had experience painting here, and it's uh, very, very cool. Yeah, it's awesome. So, all right, so tell me a little bit about your story. You know, how did, how did you get here? How did you get to Gainesville? How did you end up, you know, starting your, you know, your business around art? Like, I would love to hear about it, so take me back. 
Yeah, first of all, I'm a pharmacist, so I have <laughs> nothing to do with arts. Uh, I have some experience working as an um, entrepreneur and uh, managing teams, okay. so uh, working in the pharmaceutical industry. So maybe that helped a little bit, but uh, basically it all was uh, based on just passion to street art. When I moved to Gainesville, to the USA, I wasn't able to work by my major. It wasn't be, uh, I, w I would have to start studying everything again, like pharmaceutical industry so it was uh, not interesting for me anymore and I dedicated more time on just uh, traveling exploring the USA and uh, I've seen many different cool projects and I noticed that Gainesville are actually missing some murals and we need some colors in this town so I wrote a detailed proposal with uh, all the possible benefits for the city it might bring and uh, also because we have um, college town. This is college town. We have so many students here and uh, this contemporary art form uh, wasn't developed. Uh, so I decided to submit my proposal to the city of Gainesville. So I first went um, to ask different property owners around downtown, all the suitable uh, walls for murals, uh, ask if they would be interested. I had my own big portfolio with photographs from different places all over the world and the USA as well. And uh, many property owners, they uh, could recognize some murals, uh, those who went to Miami, you know, uh, those who have some understanding of the culture, they were really excited and they really wanted uh, uh, some murals. So I first got permission to actually do something. Then I went to visit Gainesville as a potential sponsor to ask for support and they were also really excited because that this program would bring more tourists to town, you know, promote Gainesville as our destination. So they gave us grant and then finally I went to the city of Gainesville and they helped to actually make it happen. Isn't that so cool? I mean, it makes me think, you know, you start something, right? Like you start, you know, we start, I started a scooter business 15 years ago and you don't, you don't really think about the impact that it's gonna have like long term. Yes. You know what I mean? And I look at it, I'm like, dang, like we literally changed the face of the community, especially when it comes to the University of Florida and how college students get around and how scooters have become very much part of the culture. And then like you start something like this and then these murals start popping up all over all over the place and you literally change the face of the community and make it like an art hub. I mean, that that feels pretty rewarding, doesn't it? Like, I love that stuff. Yes, when I just started it, I never thought about this as a business, as a work, as something that I would do for the rest of my life. I was just thinking that would be cool to bring some cool artists here in Gainesville and have some nice murals. Uh, and then uh, it really had a great impact. It also inspired many local artists to go ahead and get permission themselves and uh, got those commissions and paint murals so they don't really need me or the city anymore they can do it on their own okay so tell me like let's I gotta go back a little bit um, so where are you from I'm originally from Ukraine. Okay, and so you came you came to Gainesville because of, I think you were telling me before, because of family? Yes, because of the family. We traveled quite a bit. We uh, lived in France for two years before, and then we moved here. Okay, cool. And um, so I wanna ask what your favorite piece of art is <laughs> in, in Gainesville. Do you have a favorite? Well, everybody asks me that, but it's a very difficult question because I don't look at murals as you guys uh, because I know all the background behind. I know who is the artist. For me, is uh, So it's like an unfair advantage? What does that mean? <laughs> no, I mean, for me, the mural is not only the image, it also everything that is behind, the artist uh, uh, and the experience. So, for example, if I had a very good experience, but the mural, well, okay, maybe not the best in the world, but I feel very happy about it and I might say it's my favorite because I like the entire experience and uh, vice versa some murals may be like perfect but uh, I didn't like something that went uh, through the project and I can't say it's my favorite. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I mean it's uh, there is something personal in it but what I can say I like uh, all of them <laughs> because that's my work that each of the murals uh, has something unique uh, unique story, unique style. I try to bring uh, many different diverse styles here, uh, different countries, represent different cultures. So I love all of them. Okay. What about you? Um, so I, I don't know. I 
am fascinated by, like, and I don't know if like you were involved, like with all, were you involved with all the the big ones around town? Yeah, it must. Have. Okay, so like the 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 chrome alligator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, you know the recent, ta- the last one. Mm-hmm. That's the most recent one. Yeah, that's the most recent one. It was painted over the Axel White's piece. Okay, like the fact, uh, like that you can do that with paint, and it can look. I mean, like, like so th- three dimensional. It looks so three dimensional. It looks so real. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, and maybe James, we could like make an effort to throw some of these images up. Can you remind me? Like, let's make let's make note of that, um, Rebecca. If we could throw some of these images up and show some of these pieces, when, but like that that piece, and for everybody who's listening on the audio version, <laughs> we also do this in video, <laughs> and it's a good way to get some more visuals. Um, but we'll throw these pictures up. But that that piece is just like, I don't know. It it just really really surprised me. And then the one where uh, I think was it like. 3D glasses or something that are involved. Like you can put yeah. the glasses on and you see the image a couple of different ways. I mean, that's incredible stuff. I mean, I don't even, do you know what I'm talking about? It's it's over there behind uh, like America's Escape Game on University. You know what I'm talking there, about? There's a lot back the there. The Gamesville I'm trying to think of the... Theater. Yeah, the Gamesville the Theater. theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like it's like, I mean, just, ah, it's super cool. But you put the glasses on, you can see the image a couple different ways, right? You see right? different images when you throw uh, blue or red filters. Uh, so one of the images disappears. So you see two people, and once you see through one filter, you see only one. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's it's awesome. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe. It. So those those are probably my two favorites. But uh, you know, I feel like every time I turn around a corner, I'm seeing something new. You know. So what were you yeah, going to say? Yeah, the, the gator was definitely my favorite, and I see it all the time. Um, but there, there's, when Tom Petty passed, there, there's, a, I feel like, a couple. And the one that I remember is the one that the You Belong Among the Wildflowers one that I, I love. I mean, it was a big Tom Petty fan. He's quintessential Gainesville. Uh, but that's that was probably my favorite one. But it, it's funny because you do see them everywhere. And as, as I sit here in the dealership and distributors come in or parents are coming in for the first time, we talk about impact. It's funny how they're like, you know, I, they, they immediately come, I love all the murals. Like I was just driving around town and you have murals everywhere. And these people that have never been to Gainesville before are now associating it with like the fabric of our city, which is awesome. Yeah. Because I've talked about it before on the podcast where it's like we're starting to, I don't say commercial, develop a lot of things. And there's some areas that have gotten torn down that we feel like we've lost that kind of Gainesville vibe, but that's something that's giving it back, which is really important, I think, as being an advocate of the arts. So yeah, I love that stuff. So, so do you have like com- competition? And from a business model standpoint, do you have like competitors? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, from the business point, I don't really have a competition in my okay. opinion. So I have, I can, I know I normally name 352 Walls as my competitors, which is also my project that I initiated. I started, so I kind of created my own competitor here. But uh, I, I do something completely different, so I can't really say that it's my competitor. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about like the business model in a way? Like do you act as like a broker between the artists and the people who want to create the art and on their businesses or their properties or how does how does what's the business model like is probably just a better question. Yeah, I wouldn't name it uh, as a broker. I'm a project manager, so I manage everything. So if you take a 352 walls for example, uh, I'm the I'm doing everything. So I'm like uh, a selecting artist, I do all the communications, I do all the contracts, I do all the social media, I manage the project, I mean like uh, paint supplies, lifts, equipment, and all the organizational stuff. And I also do the promotion on international blogs together with the artists. So it's all complex uh, project. And um, the business model in it, is probably to find uh, the funds and to find the wall and to make this connection between uh, the property owner and the artist. Because uh, festivals, for example, they either invite artists through call to artists, which is a, a competition between artists. Some that know about this uh, call, they would apply. Some that don't know, they would never apply. So the artists I work with, they normally never apply to any calls to artists. Uh, so this is called like direct call. Uh, I mean, uh, I just invite artists that I feel would be great for this specific location for some reasons. So uh, in other words, I listen to needs of both artists and property owners. And 
try to find the perfect match. Because when you work with uh, projects like 352 Walls or other festivals, they normally don't ask the community what they want. Uh, in best case, they would just uh, show who the artist will be, but uh, they wouldn't uh, give them opportunity to select or give any voice. I think it's important because uh, speaking from the business model, who are our end users, the community, right? We have buyers who can be a property owner or a festival or somebody else, but the end user is the community. And first of all, we create those murals for them. And I feel if somebody has a, a good wall and wants a mural like we have at the Bull, as we have uh, Market Street Pub or in front of Volta, I know that uh, the owner of the world uh, is not crazy about the mural in front and he mm. uh, he initiated uh, a lot of conversations about it uh, to change he really wanted to change and even wanted to sponsor this mural but uh, he never got permission for this for some reasons so i mean uh, what I do, I try to help boss. I, f I try to artists to find job and be paid because uh, I don't really appreciate projects that don't pay artists, which is pretty much common still. People offer a good exposure and really little money uh, to get a piece for their business and then promote their business uh, using artists. So I don't want to do that. I just try to help artists to find job and I try to help property owners to find the right artists to promote their business naturally. When people see mural, you like the gator, you would go and see, hey, I, I like this mural, let's go see this, you know, and there is bar, okay, let's go to this bar. So it's like a natural marketing, it's like mouth to mouth marketing, but uh, it's absolutely uh, sincere. We could put a chrome scooter on the side of the building. <laughs> 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 no, you know, it, it, but, you and you are really really good at that because I know like even in our first I mean our very first conversation about doing a project together you very much were like uh, like can you show me some stuff that you like like yeah, what yeah. kind of, like what's the style like what kind of style do you like and and I, I you know I really like kind of like that I mean kind of like graffiti but like the very abstract or like if you think of like um graffiti, some of the stuff that's like very 3D-ish, where mm -hmm. it looks like it's coming out of the wall towards you, you know what I mean? Um, that kind of stuff, and so, so you're really, really great about about that, like really Thank fun, you. yeah. Um, Mike, you got any questions, man? I'm interested in the, the city aspect of it, because you talked yeah. about like the the owners of the building, like how, how does it start? So like say, say we wanted to put a mural on the side of our building, the face mm -hmm. is 13th what is that process like? Is there pushback from the city? Because I know that sometimes from a code standpoint, they don't like stuff like that. Uh, I hear all the time about businesses that have things painted on their the building. Maybe they didn't go the right route or whatever, but it gets painted over, they, they tell them. So, so what is the process like if somebody wants to get that done and, and how do they go about it? Well, and, and real quick, I mean, I feel like if I understand it correctly, it's not so much the art as much as there's, you know, you get so much square footage of signage based on, you know what I mean? So, right. So like if the, for example, I think if you graffitied new scooters for less across the side of the building, that, then it's the, advertising. City, that the city is gonna look at that as like a sign, yes. right, as, as a sign, so therefore that would be a code violation. But, but I mean, you can go yes, ahead and answer um, the question. You're totally right. Unless this yeah. is advertisement uh, and this is your property, you can uh, create something. It's uh, considered rather as a renovation of the facade. But if you put like exactly the sign and the business and the logo, that's different. Then you would have to obtain some kind of permission from the city. Yeah, I never recommend businesses to have mural, like uh, literally, you know, scooter. Why scooter? Okay, we uh, we know that scooters are here, but we can create something else that has a connection to scooter. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Um, let's represent the movement. You know, we can do abstract, and that would be something that uh, represent the movement and freedom and mm -hmm. uh, everything you can associate with uh, scooter. For sure, which is a way much better, well, yeah. a much better way to go. <laughs> for sure, like, <laughs> I was I was making a joke for sure, um, but I mean, have you had? You know, kind of relating back to Mike's question, have you had any pieces that created, 
you know, that created like that controvert. I, I'm not, not controvert, but I mean that you had trouble getting approved or did you, do you even have to get it approved or can I just paint whatever I want on the side of my building? Kind of, not nudity, you know, nothing religious or something that uh, can be uh, controversial. Okay. But it depends uh, what is controversial for you. For example, I have a mural uh, that uh, depicts a dead whale, if you know it's um, in front of the police department. Uh, Northwest 10th Avenue. So the mural depicts a dead whale and some flowers. So the meaning is that um, uh, in, about environmental issues and about killing the whales, about oceans that need some attention. And originally the property owner didn't like the mural. They were like uh, really um, not happy because why would we depict that? Uh, it's, it's not normal, you know, it's not uh, really good. They wanted to paint it over right away. But we asked them to keep it for a while and see how people react. And you know, this mural is still up, it's been two years already okay. <laughs> because people really love it many people say it's one of their most favorite murals because it has a meaning it, it ex explains something and it's unusual the colors the technique everything is really beautiful so for some people that could be named controversial but this is a way to ask questions because this is a uh, the power of street art to ask questions to inspire some uh, dialogues so when people see this did well they ask why why it's here, what does it mean? They may try to dig something and uh, learn such information and they figure out that there is something happening in this world, you know, that maybe you can help somehow, or at least uh, not uh, to to make it worse, you know? Yeah. And uh, this is a very interesting part of my work too, because sometimes we can incorporate an, a, an important message for a positive social change, you know, and uh, it's not always obvious, but people have to guess is there any insight as to how that affects the business? Like, do people say, oh, I don't want to go to that business, has it's the dead whale one, or it starts sparking that, that social conversation where people do want to visit that business and spend their dollars there? Like, is there any insight as to how Ooh. a certain mural might affect, like, the flow of business at a location? Yeah, I would say the more controversial mural is, the more attention is to the business. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. That's laughs> for sure. I mean, is it kind of like there's no such thing as bad publicity? Like, uh, if people are talking about it, then it attracts, like, yeah. There's a big traffic. They go, they take pictures in front, they tag the location, they may tag the business. It's natural marketing again. But it's not related right, no, to the business. No, but very controversial <laughs> piece of art on the side of it. Yeah. <laughs> Try. At least uh, you can always spend it over, right? But let's see, it's kind of experiment. <laughs> uh, talk about that too. Like I'm I'm interested, like, do you get attached to a certain mural and then it gets painted over and you're like sad to see it go? No, I'm totally fine about it because uh, this is the beauty of street art, it's temporary. I always uh, just important to take picture, nice picture of that, and then you guys can do whatever you want with this. <laughs> but uh, yes, of course, there is some sad feelings if it's uh, painted over right away, but I don't really have this experience. Is there much like vandalism of the murals? Yeah, you know, uh, it rarely happens. Normally, it, just uh, kids may put uh, a tag over a mural, but artists who are um, good artists, normal artists, they respect work of others. Normally, they never tag, never damage it, unless there are some fights, uh, I don't know, yeah, it almost, <laughs> within them competition. It almost seems that way. Like, I think about some of the walls in town and the ones that aren't painted and the ones that get, like, tagged, and people almost respect the ones that are painted more, uh, just from, like, a graffiti standpoint. I mean, it seems that way. I don't know if that's true, but I'm curious about it. Murals are also used to fight with graffiti because, uh, like I just said, uh, some artists respect the work of others and they wouldn't tag. But um, kids can do uh, everywhere. Right. But in Gainesville, we don't really have uh, illegal graffiti here. I would say we don't have it at all. It's one of the cleanest towns ever because we have 34th Street Wall. I think it really helps because those kids who want to try to tag and uh, spray paint and they name, they just go to the 34th Street Wall and they're sure that they wouldn't have any problems. Yeah, so for everybody who's listening, if you're listening outside of Gainesville, we have a wall that go, runs up 34th Street. Um, that is basically free canvas. I yeah. mean, it, anybody can go there and paint. Um, do, do you know the history of, of that wall at all? 
artwork. Yes, this wall, uh, that's just a retained wall, and uh, the first graffiti was painted there in 1979. 79? So, yes, it's a pretty long <laughs> wow. history of this wall, and there was a big controversy about this, and the city was thinking about to forbid it. So for some period of time, it wasn't legal to do anything there, and the city tried to fight with this and clean and punish uh, those people, you know? But then... Uh, How long they, did that last, you know? Uh, I don't have that much information. Okay. It's not that much on the internet you can find. Uh, I found actually a good uh, research that was cre uh, done one by one person who is not even from Ginzo. She documented all the murals for two years and uh, she uh, noticed all the colors, all the topics, everything. So that's a really cool information oh, about that. it. It's awesome. Yes, and uh, the research shows that uh, mostly greetings, mostly something, uh, some political views sometimes. There were some interesting reactions when uh, somebody may put like Nazis, you mm. know, and and then people would come and paint it over right away and do a, maybe a TV show even out of this. So this kind of things happen there at the wall. Now we have a memorial, even two. So first was uh, dedicated to victims and the second one is a tribute to Tom Petty. Uh, and now artists try to keep those murals clean. So if somebody tags, they just come and clean it and repaint. So this is a really long history and I know that the city finally gave up. They realized that maybe, okay, let's keep it and it's totally fine. I mean, it's kind of good because they allow. There's a place to go, which maybe keeps it off other places. You know, the um, that victim, the victim one, mm -hmm. has been there for a long time. Right. I think every time I drive by there, it's it's, it's, it's one of the there. it's one of the interesting things about that wall is every time someone does paint over it, it's like immediately redone. Uh, and it's been that way for gosh, I think that I think it was first painted in 1990. The, the Danny Rowling serial killing murders. But. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. It's definitely interesting. Like now, there's a Tom Petty one. I, didn't, yeah. I don't even think I knew that. Yeah. Shows you how often I go down 34th Street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to that side of town very much anymore. I'm over here on the 13th and University side. Right. Like, <laughs> stay in my zone. <laughs> uh, you have uh, four murals, uh, Tom Petty murals in town. Yeah. So how many? <laughs> how many? layers of paint do you think are on that wall? Yeah, some students <laughs> tried to count and they counted like over 200. Yeah, when you, you can go there and you actually can take out a piece of, like a chip of this paint because sometimes uh, there is so ma much paint that it becomes heavy and it falls down. So you can pull it off and uh, take a piece and you will see all the layers. It's like history, oh, wow. they were like painted 10 years ago. That's funny. <laughs> awesome. I mean, there's got to be a lot. I mean, I've painted that wall before. Mm -hmm. We painted it for the scooter shop once. I mean, I think like even advertising back to school or something. Yeah, we've done that. I've done it with the drum line and different band fraternities and stuff like that. Yeah. For a scooter shop. Yeah. It's super interesting. But it's definitely became become one of those uh, staples, you know? Right. It's definitely one of those you haven't you haven't lived in Gainesville. I, I don't know if this is in the, what is it, the F, the F book? Um, but I feel like that's a Gainesville rite of passage. Like if you haven't painted the 34th Street wall, then you haven't really done Gainesville, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I kind of just feel that way. like on one of those checklists, yeah. going to Gainesville, paint the 34th Street wall, boom, check. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the questions you got, Mike? Oh Lord, um, I'm curious, like, the, how does it go from concept to, like, does the owner of the building have any say in what what gets painted on there, or does it just like, or, or I mean, do you do you say, hey, like, we, I've had this idea, I wanna find an artist that fits this idea, or Talk about that, like the, from concept to execution, what is that process like? Yeah, it depends. Um, sometimes uh, property owners tell me right away what they want approximately or what they like, and then I could go from there. If there is uh, nothing uh, specifically, I would ask myself, like, uh, what you like? What's your favorite mural here, there? I sometimes may, like, uh, may ask to just show any murals they like at all, just to realize what uh, the style was, the, you know, how this person feels about um, style you know and then uh, I would select somebody it actually helps also me because uh, I know so many artists and I would want to work like for for more than a hundred artists you know and uh, it's difficult for me if I have a, like a blank canvas mm -hmm. and so much choice uh, it would be difficult really to select so I would ask the property owner to suggest at least topic or what is the business about or uh, many factors that can be 
uh, considered. Also, if the other, if the property owner asks about something specific, like for example, uh, I want a train. I see a train here, you know, and I say, all right, I can invite artists who would paint you the train exactly as you like. But we also can ask him or her to suggest something that they see because they might have ideas that you cannot even imagine at this moment, and uh, that normally works. <laughs> Do you ever just, is there ever a concept that you're like, I really want to do this, I really want to have this executed, but I'm just waiting for somebody to be okay with it, or I'm trying to find the space for it, or does the concept ever precede the the canvas? Ooh, yes, uh, that, for example, I have several artists that are really great at some point. Like in San 51, I also was looking for a place uh, to invite him, you know, and bring something interesting. I like to represent different styles, different techniques, di uh, different technologies, whatever is new to the field. Also, I was uh, looking for a place to put a mural that uh, raises awareness about the gun violence in the USA, the gun control. That was really difficult to do. The design was amazing, and I didn't find anyone <laughs> who would agree to place it on their wall, unfortunately, but maybe someday I will find. So was this like, did somebody already have something kind of drawn out or sketched out? Yes. Oh, uh, they did? And yes. They... But, uh, you know, people normally want something that they're familiar with. So this is another very interesting question and uh, a good point that uh, people who invite artists want mural normally just saw regular people and they don't have much knowledge, experience, and understanding of the culture. And what they want, they normally want just uh, a portrait, like a face that easily you can recognize, you know, easily understand, or 3D. So this is the most common uh, request I normally have. But um, street art or public art or muralism, uh, it's much more. It can show you something that you you never even thought about. So that's why I try to show property owners different options, what actually exists, what he can select of, and, and then it, I would understand that they have more conscious decision about the style or subject. Yeah, I always feel like, you know, I want it to be like really, really cool, something that like is my flavor, right? Like something that I'm, that I'm personally gonna enjoy. But like I 100% always recommend people not dictate. Like you know what I mean? It's like it's like hiring an architect to build the building, and then you say, Dude, I'm the, but, but I'm, I want this here, I want this there, I want this there. Like it's like you know what I mean? I'm and, the guy that sits down to get my haircut and just says, make me beautiful. I'm not gonna tell you how yeah, to do yeah, your exactly. job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, just. exactly. It's like if you like dictate everything, then you're gonna miss out on the true design or something. You know, you're not gonna get the the full value of it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, that's just the way I feel personally about it, but it's like, let them, let them do their thing. Yeah, what is that balance though between having somebody try to, try to give too much direction versus letting the artist do what they're Three. good at? Yes, you are totally right about the architecture or we can make a connection about many other things. Like uh, we have to think about the result, what we are going to achieve rather than tell uh, how to achieve it, right? Because you wouldn't say architecture, how he has to draw the sketch, right? right. And uh, same about art, you just have to select artists and uh, be familiar with his or her portfolio, understand what is gonna be, and just say what uh, you expect, like what kind of uh, impression, impact, uh, the final message you want to get, but don't say what, how to create it. I had, I had experience when a property owner literally recommended, like, can you add some more clouds here? Can oh, you change no. these colors? <laughs> like, I feel like this one is better, you know? Um, I normally, yeah, it's annoying, but um, uh, we it's... normally take it as normal because people all, they all have their own vision and understanding, and then sometimes we do can but that's uh, like make one of those changes. That's like one of those things where you end up putting the extra clouds because <laughs> because they're the they're the paying customer or you like no, no. Normally, you don't. no, no. Right. If it I was, about, I was about to say, I'd be like, listen, you hired us, we're the experts, like, let us do our thing, okay? Normally not. Normally, we are trying to convince uh, this that this request doesn't fit for some reasons, if it doesn't fit. If the property owner has something right, um, why not? That's yeah. fine. But I think it's up to artists. The artist decides he is the boss or she. I actually have this, I mean, I actually have the same fear with media projects, like video work, you mm -hmm. know, like we'll get asked to do like a video sure. project and we do like, we'll do a video project and and I'm like, oh man, this is awesome, this is beautiful, like I can't wait to show the client, and the show, the, <laughs> show the client, and the client's like, oh yeah, that's great, can we like, can we change this and that? And like, yeah. and, and I'm like, no. 
<laughs> why would you want to ruin this perfect piece of art? I mean, like we basically create art in the digital form, right? It's like, why would you want to ruin this perfect piece of art? And at the end of the day, it's like, there, there is, there's that balance. It's like, they're the paying client. They're the one, they're paying for it. They're the paying client. And you know, it's like, oh. Meanwhile, one time you asked me to merchandise the showroom and I spent the entire day Hold on, are you, are you about to throw me under a bus or something? I spent the entire like, day with the team putting things, you know, in some different kind of way. And he walks in and says, that's okay, but I hate that. I hate that. And I'm like, dude, you gave me nothing to work with. <laughs> Executing someone else's vision is very difficult. Yes, I am going to throw you under the bus. I, I don't remember this at all. I, I can think of five people that do. Uh, I mean... In other news, I give very <laughs> blunt feedback. <laughs> it's just very much like, yeah, that's But not, it is very similar. I mean, like in business, I mean, there's sometimes where you do have to, like I had to execute your vision and, and what kind of feedback do I get? The more feedback I can get, if you've got something in your head, then it makes it easier to carry that out. But sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of a block there. If you're not getting enough inspiration or enough mm -hmm. uh, direction, then, but you know somebody's got something in their head, then it's like, how do you execute it? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, I think that's what, I mean, at least from the art side, the, if I like, so we're, we're totally gonna do a piece together. I think we're like, we're waiting, we've been trying to figure out the right spot, the right time, like all of it, right? And and I think it's gonna happen exactly the way I expected, like seeing seeing some examples, right? Seeing examples, things that I that I like, that it like fit my, my taste of what I would want, uh, you know, and then just saying, oh, well, like, I like this, I like that, I like this, but then be like, just taking a step back and saying, all right, let, let them do, there's the canvas, do your thing. I'm not gonna say, I want I want it to go there, I want orange there, I want blue there, uh, you know, like whatever. I don't, those, this, it's funny that those two colors are the colors that just <laughs> like randomly out. pop out. Yeah, in the, <laughs> Such a gator. Such a gator. Um, you know, but I'm not gonna, like I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna say, there's the canvas, ready, set, go. Let them do their thing, you know? It'll be fun. I can't wait. I can't wait to do that. I, we've we've been exchanging some pieces like that. I want to do in the future studio whenever we get a studio, um, and and I'm, I look forward to that day. So, um, what would you say has been the biggest challenge so far? How, so, how many? When did you start the company officially? What year? I uh, registered the company a year ago. Actually, okay. only a year ago. A year. So, what's been the biggest challenge thus far? Yeah, uh, my first project was the the most challenging. It was uh, dealing with the grant and the governmental process, which is always complicated. Mm. So uh, that's why I don't do this anymore. I tr prefer to work with just private organizations instead. Uh, so that was difficult because uh, you have three parties. Uh, you have the government, you have the property owner, you have the artist. Mm -hmm. And all of them have their own uh, needs, uh, requirements, schedules, you know, uh, it's very difficult. Called. So it's better to work uh, with the smaller amount of people in the team. <laughs> right, okay. And uh, I mean, well, I mean, working with the government, of course, that's gonna take, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's gonna take a while. I mean, what's a, what, what, would, what would you say is a typical project length? I mean, it probably depends on the artist, right? Mean, uh, like, just, like how like, long? How long? Like, if I said, okay, we want to put up, we want to do this project, mm -hmm. all right, from from like once I've let's just say once I've made a decision like this yeah. is this is the type of art that I would like to see how long would it take for you to put that together and get that art up on the wall yeah it's also very different uh, I have a project now that it's been uh, we are in conversation for one year yeah <laughs> it's uh, um, but we know the artist already we know the wall we know everything but it's been one year and we still haven't done it um, I don't know why and some projects can be really fast so my quickest was uh, a week that from the just okay let's do this this is the artist the artist sends the sketch right away the property owners like the sketch uh, sends money and i uh, manage all the equipment materials the artist pays it's done week that's it but it rarely happens normally people take time to think and um it all, always uh, more difficult to get the budget on the account because uh, people can take time from actually making decision to make the mural and pain right uh, this is uh, an important moment because they might change their mind thinking about maybe i would do just a weed paste i mean just a print it and uh attached to the wall or they have some other ideas why would they change their mind but it happens 
So I would say in most cases, average uh, maybe a month. Okay, that's not really that bad. No. <laughs> I mean, I was expecting much longer, I think. It really depends on the owner or who requests this. With the government, that might take a year and it's fine. It's like uh, normal. Uh, if uh, the property owner is uh, easygoing, that's really fast. For me, yeah, for me, it's just a week. I don't need more. Yeah, then if you get a property, property owner who wants more clouds, yeah. <laughs> it can take yeah, a while. I, can how many to put uh, I just, I know those, you know, it's like I hear that and I'm like, yeah, I know those people. We, we get them as customers at New, new Scooters for less. Oh, sure. Sometimes. I mean, they exist everywhere. Uh, so, so, do you have anything like, like, what's, is there anything currently in the works? Like, what, any, anything we have to look forward to in terms of big projects? Like, where they might be popping up? Yes, I actually can announce that I just got a new uh, award, which is the grant from the Florida Department of uh, Cultural Affairs. So this is my first grant ever received from the government, and I applied to this a year ago, and I got it. I didn't even expect they would give me anything at all. <laughs> but the project is actually about um, 10 uh, the most uh, interesting urban art destinations in Florida, and I'm going to explore Florida and take pictures, do some videos, videos and uh, publish uh, articles about it and with the final exhibition here in Gainesville uh, to show people what we actually have in Florida. And the goal of this project is to to introduce what's going on um, here. For example, if you think of the most uh, artsy, more, the most street art city in Florida, what city would you think about? Ooh, why would you do that to me? <laughs> I'll let Mike take this I one. Mean, I I would think it would be Miami. Exactly. Everybody thinks of Miami That's because of wind with walls. Yes, but, but it's not. Uh, we have no. We have uh, Miami is the, for sure the okay. most famous one. But besides Miami, we have the minimum ten or fifteen other mural projects in Florida. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to introduce people to those projects and maybe encourage them to go and visit those places to see at least what we have. Okay. And compare Gainesville. Gainesville is among the the most uh, advanced cities in street art too nowadays here in Florida. That's so cool. That gets me so excited. Right. <laughs> I don't know, like I just love like, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, man, that's, I don't know, it's awesome. Like you want a very, you know, just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wholesome, like, you know what I mean? Like I, I like when you have, you know, the music scene, the art scene, mm -hmm. the business scene, the like, I mean, even the student scene, you know, like all of it, when you can have when all of it can be great, like it's just awesome. Yeah. So, so, so you say Gainesville is going to be the the exhibition site for this project. So if, am I understanding? So you're going to go around to all the state and see these murals, and and it's like an inspiration project, and then you come back, and then you have artists that paint like what you were inspired by or like it will be just exhibition photo exhibition with photographs from different places and projects but okay. uh, i want to host it here in gainesville because uh, we also have a lot of students here and i want to encourage them to go travel i know some people might live here for a long time but they have never been to miami daytona or anywhere else so i just want to encourage people to go see some culture other places. So this will be an exhibition like at a museum type thing where you go visit like the photographs? In or? the gallery, yes. In the gallery, yeah. okay. Yes. Got it. That's gonna be cool. Hey, you guys, you did the the piece out at Tech City? Yeah, I did. You did? Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't know they had a piece out there. Yes, yeah, so yeah. this is also a common project that we plan with Mitch uh, to put some more arts there in this new city, te the Tech City. Mm -hmm. It is going to be something uh, very unusual and very cool. It's cool. Uh, He's putting like a, a museum, kind of like a little, it's his office that's going to be out there, but it's like a museum. It's kind of like a half yes. museum in a way. It's going to have like all these entrepreneurial artifacts in there and stuff. And... You guys did, it was Benjamin Franklin, right? Yes, exactly, because uh, he was a great entrepreneur and the museum is going right, to be okay. dedicated to this. It's like a this. huge, I mean, it's a big wall. How, how, how tall is that wall? Uh, I mean, like three huge. story. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> The thing, the thing was huge, and I, I asked, I asked Mitch, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. I'm like, how, <laughs> how, I'm like, how long did that take? And he said, like a week. Yeah, when he sent me the proposal for this mural, the wall didn't exist even. You know, I just had a sketch, so I had to find artists and explain what it's going to be without even having this property yet. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of freaked me out in a, in a very good way. <laughs> That's got to be interesting. Like, yeah, there's not property there yet. There's not a wall there yet. But it, you will have a blank canvas. 
at some point. <laughs> you, you, you took me for my first tour there. We were there with Allison, um, who's the CEO of Repaint, and, and I looked in, like I was looking through the glass, so I don't know actually what it looks like from the inside, but I thought it was a gigantic like throw rug. And I was like, first of all, why does somebody have that size of a throw rug of Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> but like I was like, it felt like it was textured almost. And like I said, I was looking from the outside in, so I don't know what it actually looks like, but I was kind of like, I was super, I was super intrigued by it anyway, but I thought it was cool. I like yeah. it. I mean, I like it's American history and stuff too. So when you put art and American history together, it's really neat. And I know that yeah. that Mitch and the crew out there are planning on doing a lot more stuff, uh, which which is exciting. So, um, all right. So do you have like do you have plans for like expansion? Like what is like what does the next five years look like for you? I mean, are you still are you still a pharmacist? Like you're still doing that? <laughs> like or no. is this this full time now? That's full time now. This is full time, okay. Yes. So like you're really all in on this thing. I mean, what's the next five years look like for you? Well, I, I feel like I'm gonna travel and do many projects uh, all around states because I already have uh, invitations from different places. So for example, my uh, next project is in Erie, Pennsylvania. We are going to paint a deck in the port, which is really interesting, unusual surface. The mural is going to be on the ground. So uh, it's challenging. The artist is really great and amazing. And uh, the city doesn't have any murals yet. So this is like a beginning of a new mural project and turning a city into a cultural destination again. And for me, it's really interesting to start. So for example, I had experience working in my home country, actually after Gainesville, uh, creating. Is that your alarm? Yeah, can you have an you alarm? turn it off? <laughs> 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 alarm is going off in her phone. Yeah, I mean, can you? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. 9 a.m. It's time to wake up. I was going to say, is that time to wake up? Is it time to wake up? Do you normally wake up at 9 a.m.? I never wake up that early. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. Uh, We're not editing. I love the authenticity. No. Look look at me right now. (laughs) That's staying in. We're not editing any of that out. (laughs) That's all staying in. (laughs) No, that's that's, that's hilarious. I love it. Uh, So. The next five years. She's good. She's she should do this more. She's like yeah. She's like right back into it. So let's keep going. Yeah, um, I I really like how it developed. So when I just uh, registered my company, I didn't think of this as a business. It just was you know just more uh, safe to have an LLC rather than working you know uh, without the without it. And I didn't plan it as a developing as a business, but uh, it actually goes really well, and I'm getting more and more invitation in different places. So I assume I would just uh, travel and do projects um, wherever I can. That's so cool. So how, how are these people finding out about you? How does somebody in Pennsylvania find out about you know, about your business? <laughs> yeah, it sounds weird, but uh, yeah. the culture fair manager is from Jacksonville, and he knows my work from the project I did in Jacksonville, so he uh, just invited me to work on it. And that's how people know. Um, for example, now the current uh, city, uh, culture fair manager in, the ja- in Jacksonville, uh, he would recommend me to the projects there. They know, you know, people know my work, and they just invite me, and they recommend next and next, and uh, this is just mouse to mouse marketing. That's so cool. So what's the logistics of that like? I mean, are you it, it, with a project, you know, that's out of the city or out of the state even, like are you, have, do you have to go back and forth a lot or are you going, is this the thing where you like, you'd go up there, stay for like a week or two, crush it out, come back? Yeah, I can actually manage any project just sitting in my home. Uh, okay. It doesn't. I don't even have to be there, but it's better to be there to control everything. So if I have somebody uh, that would manage all the equipment, be there on the side and help artists with the logistic on the side, I wouldn't even go. But um, normally I go for a week. I plan everything in advance, uh, everything is ready, and then I would just come and assist artists to make sure that everything goes well. Because every time uh, something may happen, something unexpected, like uh, you wouldn't find the right paint, th- something with equipment, something is in delay, some kind of uh, permissions were not obtained, or s- anything can happen. And it's better to be there, to be flexible, to find solutions and uh, you know, solve the problems. Cool, what, what's been the most rewarding experience so far? I think uh, in Ukraine, my experience in Ukraine, that was a huge project. We painted uh, almost 50 murals from 16 to 26 story tall, which is huge. Wow. Uh, One of them, uh, 26 stories, uh, is considered to be the tallest in Europe, unofficially. 
uh, I mean, it wasn't recorded as a Guinness record, but um, it is very tall. And uh, that gave me an opportunity to work with a lot of uh, famous artists, very cool artists. The whole project was, um, the, uh, it, it aimed to raise awareness to the problem of war and violence. As you may know, there is still war in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine, and we wanted to attract the media and attention because people don't really talk about it on the TV, you know, because if you have just one, two soldiers die a day, it's not that interesting that to tell about Beyonce, you know, or something that is more important and interesting for people. So we invited famous artists to create murals, and then blogs would write about those artists creating murals in Ukraine, and then people would know there is something going on. Dang. That's, I mean, that brings so much more purpose mm -hmm. to artwork, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yes, and also the experience working there on the project uh, it was totally different than here. It was more, I call it wild, because there were no contracts, there were, uh, weren't like uh, any governmental issues. We just had uh, the property belongs to the uh, city. You know, it's a different kind of, uh, of all the politics. So we just got permission for all the walls and we could paint uh, any. Uh, was very interesting. Artists weren't told what to paint. They weren't uh, restricted. Uh, nobody complained about anything, you know, like the clouds or whatever. They created, many of them created some of the best pieces uh, so far in the career. So I, I feel like it was a really powerful project. That's incredible. <clears throat> is there a point where, like, coming back to just Gainesville, where you feel like your vision's been carried out? Like, is it, I don't want to say necessarily a X amount of murals that are standing at one time, but, like, is there a point where you're like, okay, like, this is now an art community, you know, for, for everybody to come in and see? Is, is, is that, like, is that a point? Is that a, is that a vision for you, or...? Uh, when uh, when I just started, I thought about it to just like bring some artists, right? Then uh, I became interested in bringing more, making more. But now I don't uh, feel that the more murals, the better. I feel like it's more important <clears throat> for murals to express something. So not just have to turn a city to a cultural destination mm -hmm. to uh, bring some economic development, but actually educate the public about the current issues we have around the world you know i mean the, this uh the art has uh, a lot of power that we just uh, don't know you know do not appreciate so is there a fear of like saturation where like kind of like you said like if there's too many that it kind of lessens the the impact or the view of like one like they're kind of lost amongst each other. Yeah, exactly. If you go to Miami, you see the <clears throat> so many murals, then you would just uh, not appreciate it. You just uh, go and take pictures. Oh, I like this. I like this. I like this. And then you get bored because uh, it's too many, too much, and they have no meaning. It's uh, you know, not only good murals there. There is everything. You know, just like 34th Street Wall, you mm -hmm. can place anything you want. So if every business owner that listens to this podcast contacts you and says, we want a mural, when do you say no? When it's for free. <laughs> 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 but it happens, yes. Uh, it, it's an interesting question. I had many uh, funny requests like for a uh, weed dispenser that is about to be open in Gainesville soon. They want a mural. Um, we have some pet resorts that want a mural. We have, like sometimes the requests are really unexpected and unusual. And the point, but it depends what they want. And they want something specific that I'm sure I wouldn't find artists who would be willing to promote this, you know, and paint like weeds. Maybe I would say no, but it depends. Maybe, uh, uh, we can create something interesting, you know, that would impact the community. And we just have to consider how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So tell me a little bit about this book you're working on. Yeah. You're working on a book? Yeah, I'm working hard, like 15 hours a day. Really? Um, yeah, it's so wow. really difficult. And uh, originally I thought I would just put images, uh, collect some comments from artists, put together, and that's it. But it's not. So it's actually developing, and I uh, do research. So uh, I study uh, in the Warrington College of Business, and I uh, do some, some of the courses like uh, marketing or statistics. Uh, they really inspire uh, to dig and uh, apply it to 
uh, street art or Laos, for example. Uh, nowadays, we have many uh, cases uh, that are about graffiti and the controversy whether uh, illegal graffiti cannot be uh, can be protected by copyright uh, law. You know, mm. it's very interesting. The industry is still raw, and uh, we don't have enough precedence. You know, we don't really know how to judge and it's very interesting what's going on now how brands may use murals as a background for the advertisement for cars you know mercedes or other would do this and then artists complain they sue, try to sue brands but brands have a lot of lawyers and uh, they're more powerful it's very interesting what's going on so i'm going to write um about some business aspects of street art, how I see this from my personal experience. And I also com collect comments from the most accomplished artists in the world, like I'm going to have 100 participants, artists, curators, uh, public art administrators, property owners. You can be part of it too, if you like. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's super interesting. That's really, really cool. So when's that, when are you expecting to be finished with that? Like how long is that project? September, take? I'm going to publish it. Yeah, so it's okay. almost wow. done. It's almost done. Uh, still a lot of work of editing and uh, it appeared to be really difficult to collect uh, responses from artists. Now I understand that statistics and all the, this kind of work, like surveys is really difficult because people are not that, you know, uh, collaborating, they're busy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they have their own schedule and it's really hard to actually get the honest answer so in this book I will have both some opinions will be expressed specifically from an artist and some opinions will be just uh, anonymous uh, but I will have the lineup of all the participants in this book but I want to encourage artists honesty and uh, to say what they really think about those call to artists what they think about working for some brands businesses what they think uh, is considered to be commercial art what they think uh, artists have to promote them themselves like marketing how it has to be it's uh, interesting that uh, the answers sometimes can be really opposite. So I try to put it like in contrast. Some artists say that, and the others say something totally different. At the same time, at some topics, I have everybody saying just the same, just the same, but uh, it's opposite to what the government does for example. Mm. Uh, so I, I hope uh, this book would give some insights to the field, what's going on there, because uh, all those topics is normally uh, discussed often between each other, between artists, curators, so, you know, just gossiping. And I feel like uh, some people have to know uh, what people really want, because again, this is about the final consumer who is benefiting out of this, you know, this is all for the, for the community, right? But um, it's interesting also that I was told that uh, I have to, in my work, I have to focus more on property owners or people who pay, you know, but I feel like uh, I have to focus more on artists because they are my main asset. Uh, they are who create it. And if we don't have the respect from artists, if they are treated badly, you know, if they don't have enough payment or bad conditions, bad organization, that what um, happens often because uh, street art now is very popular and and uh, street art festivals are, you know, appearing everywhere. It's just like mushrooms after the rain, you know, it's like here, here, here. Uh, and uh, it doesn't, the curator doesn't have to have education, experience or something. This is what happened to me. I, I became a curator just because uh, I submitted a proposal. So I didn't have uh, any art education or anything else. Well, okay, I had the business education. So that helped. But looking back, I understand that if I would start a new project in Gainesville now, I would do it differently. I would first educate the community, involve them, ask what they want, um, make it more, uh, you know, related to the city because mm. this is uh, what we are creating it for. That's awesome. That is so excellent. I commend you so much. Mm. And one, just want to... This has been an absolute pleasure. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And thank you, thank you for changing the landscape of Gainesville and, and being one of those, uh, I don't know, just an inspiration. I mean, like, I, I love it. I love seeing people who are invested into into this community and, and changing it for the better. And it's obvious that you're doing that. And I'm just, uh, so I'm super excited to see what the future holds for your, for your new company. Thank you. So, uh, Mike, you have any last questions, man? Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I just think, just to echo that, it makes it super like 
awesome to be a Gainesville resident when stuff like that pops up. So thank you. That, I mean, it's like a little pleasant surprise. You know, like when you yeah. like go around a new a corner where there wasn't a and mural. You see a new one, right. <laughs> and you're like, oh dang. And I mean, my wife, being a photographer, like she'll like scope them, like she'll like scope them out for, um, you know, just for just to get pictures and like I mean, just it's it's really really cool. Well, we did the the project. Um, talk about that a little bit like the the one for the scooter we did a scooter video and incorporated a lot of the murals uh in town yeah it makes you that, it makes was, you proud of like where you're yeah, know, where you're from it's it just like, made a super awesome like video for for a distributor just to incorporate that and it gives it a little taste of gain not, not that it was a gainsville video but it gives a little taste of that and, yeah. and art and it just made it a really good canvas for for something we we're already doing so super yeah. cool i i love it so thank you again yeah. um where can where can everybody find you um you know you have gmburbanart.com Okay, and it's easy do you have any, to remember. <laughs> are you active on social media? Uh, on social media, I go by Irina Kanishova, if okay. you can remember this, <laughs> I'll pronounce. We'll find you. Yes. We'll, we'll put it up on the screen, so on the video portion, so people can find you, and, yeah. uh, and cool. Well, thank you again so very much for being here. And um, Gainesville, this is the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. whoa. We will see you later. 